I am John Crowcroft, I'm from University of Cambridge. I'm also 50% of my time in the Turing Institute for Data Science in London. I've been here since the beginning, so I, I worked with Zeynep, uh, uh, kind of setting the thing up. Uh, it was mainly her thing, but I was kind of uh, helping host the first one in Cambridge and uh, uh, trying to pull together the, some of the computing side and some of the some other aspects of the social science side, that uh, you know, not just statistics, but also law and other areas. We slightly change topics each year because obviously there's the kind of what is this year's topic. Uh, one of the things of moving to London and being in part of the sort of government buildings, I think is it's been very good for attracting a, a very international attendance. Um, and also I think we, we have demos this year, so we've got some technical material being shown, but also I think the, uh, the you know, three years is quite a long time in, in technology. And what's really interesting to see here, at least in ju not just the demos for some of the papers, is people in policy, in, in, in government, civil service, uh, um, whatever, from multiple countries are actually showing and, and talking about uh, the combination of technology for uh, for, you know, for data science and policy, for actually you know, dealing with uh, policing or poverty or safety in different parts of a city, a whole bunch of different things. But the, the uh, first year and maybe a bit the second year, there was more separate. It was sort of, here's some cool technology you might see in government at some point. And then now what we've been seeing is you know, the, the actual use of the technology in, in, in uh, departments. And so that's kind of quite a quite a good advance. Uh, there's a long way to go, but it's, uh, it's nice. One of the goals of the conference is, uh, I guess, you know, it's not a hidden agenda, is to advance the use of data, uh, data science for policy, so essentially evidence and analysis of evidence for, for policy. Um, so we, we have that agenda and it's, it's quite clear. And I think that you know, we, we've been, Anthony Finkelstein, who's the Chief Science Advisor for Governments in the UK for security, has hosted us here for, for free. Uh, that's pretty strong evidence that the government you know, was paying attention. Um, so I think we, you know, our goal is kind of starting to succeed. But there's a huge distance to go. So we, we just had a, 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 a keynote and a panel before that, a panel session where uh, there were people talking about uh, various different things that will happen and you know how long will it be was sort of one of the questions that kept being asked you know will, uh, how, how, how soon will we see those things happen like like a single identity system for government services in a big country like the UK or some other part of Europe and, uh, that's not just a small place like Estonia or, or a you know, single uh, mechanism for doing payment through supply chains like blockchain or whatever so you know so there's a lot of things that so but yeah I think we, we're, we're having an impact on government um, and uh, uh, you know, they're providing us with interesting input to what they need to know too. The topic that always comes up is to do with uh, um, privacy and data science. Um, and uh, there, there are a number of solutions out there, but I haven't heard people talking about what they're doing with data and policy, data for policy, and uh, talk very clearly about what their uh, support for privacy. People kind of name check it. Uh, but they don't say what their solution is. Um, so I think that's going to be a challenge um, because people build systems without appropriate security first and then try and add security will find that they may have got it fundamentally wrong. And that's an old, an old story from many bits of computing like the internet in general. Um, so there, 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 are, there are agencies that have done the right thing. I mean, it's a very, nobody's talked about it here, but one of the UK successes is we completely virtualized the DVLA, driving vehicle licensing, um, organization that issues you driving license and your car tags and registration and so on. So it's all paper free now. And when you get your car MOT, you know, it's made roadworthy checked each year, that's all paper free. It's an incredible success story. I mean, it's like cut the cost of operating that hugely and, you know, it's, it's, it's a, and, and it addressed security. It actually addressed security too well because it was quite hard for a lot of garages, the mechanics, to, they had to learn how to do secure sign on. But, you know, once that was debugged, it's, it's a really nice example of quite a big government agency. Uh, just essentially, you know, going for agile computing solution, it's all done. Um, but a lot of other government departments and some of the ones where you care more about security, like healthcare or, or uh, crime or whatever, uh, um, are not, uh, uh, not visibly writing down solutions. It's not they're not aware that there is an issue, but it's, uh, it's definitely a challenge. And then the other one I think that came out was, was an interesting discussion, uh, for example, with the discussion about identity and the fact there are 70 different current systems out there um, was was this question of scale that the you know, UK is a sort of uh, in the top I think, four countries in population in Europe uh, certainly 
I can't remember what the ordering is, in, in the EU anyway, um, I think Russia is actually the biggest, you count all of Europe, but, but next you've got sort of Germany and Poland and so on. Poland might be, anyway, so in the sort of 50, 60 million range, that's hard enough. And then you want to do something across 300 million, or if you take actually Europe, in geographic Europe, it's 700 million people. That's massive, but it's also scale uh, because we have 30 different languages and multiple alphabets, suddenly that's really complicated and we have different cultures and different models of things and so on. So all those things are, are you know, are really big challenges. But a lot of the stuff here that's quite nice, like I say, is sort of just making progress is down at a local government level. And, you know, they're really, really good. I mean, it's like I mentioned uh, Essex, actually, have a whole slew of projects which are really kind of pushing forward what you can do and in several different sectors, but all talking to each other. And that's absolutely you know, great because that can be done and the scale there is, you know, is, is tractable. And you find the same in many local councils, you know, which have typically kind of Camden or Westminster, I think a population sort of 50,000 kind of scale. Um, and they're heterogeneous. You, know, you have multiple languages even there, right? But, um, uh, but they're still doing pretty well, I think. So yeah, so it's kind of quite a, range and scope is, is interesting and good.